Good morning and welcome to the Hall of Justice for our, our October case call. Uh, before I call this morning's um, second case, um, I'd like to call up Joe Gavin from the Michigan Supreme Court Historical Society. He is the uh, current president um, to give us an overview of um, the society's uh, activities. Uh, thank you, Madam Chief Justice. Uh, Chief Justice, associate members of this court, uh, Said I'm Joe Gavin. I'm the president of the Historical Society, Michigan Supreme Court Historical Society. It's my privilege to be able to speak to you today. I'll note that I only have one page of remarks, so I'll try and be brief. <laughs> um, as, you, as I'm sure you all know, the mission of our society is to increase the understanding of this honorable court's work by preserving its history through scholarship, memorabilia, and portrait representations of the justices. And before my remarks, I'd like to take a brief thank you to our past president, Carl Hurstein. He was the society's third president, and I want to thank Carl for his invaluable contributions. He remains on our board, continuing to provide valuable insight. We also like to thank for their service Larry Nolan, the immediate past vice president, and Denise Langford Morris is the immediate past secretary, both of whom also remain on our board. So, in addition to my becoming president this past year, uh, Matt Hurstein has taken over as vice president, Janet Welsh as secretary, and John Fedinsky as treasurer. And I want to thank them all for their service and the work that they're doing for our society. We also welcomed a new board member this year, Robert Riley. So despite that it was a year of transition for our society, uh, it was also a successful year. Uh, that's th thanks in large part due to the work of our executive director, Lynn Seek Seeks, and our assistant executive director, Carrie Charlo, both of whom, along with several board members, are in the courtroom today. We published four newsletters, supported portrait unveilings for former Justice Wilder and Justice Davis. Uh, we sponsored two special events, one on the discussion of the significance of this court's decision in Pole Town and its subsequent overturning, at which Justice Sorrow was intimately involved, and then another on the legacy of women in the Supreme Court, in this court, in which Justice Welch contributed her, uh, her valuable time, and we thank you both for that. We hosted our annual luncheon at the Inn St. John's, where Professor Justin Simard gave the John W. Reed Lecture. And the to his topic was on the work of citing slavery, his citing slavery project, and the important work of exposing the foundations of where some of our laws are built upon the legacy of slavery and how we should be alerted to that. We've also undertaken a significant archiving project where over 80% of the materials in our possession have been archived and cataloged, and our goal is once that process is completed, we'll be disseminating and publishing that, those materials for broader public viewing and distribution with the hope of continuing to increase uh, awareness about this court's work. And of course, we, work to con we continue to work to expand society's membership and to highlight the important work of this court. And then finally, uh, we look forward to the rest of 2024 and into 2025. We have an upcoming progressive dinner uh, that we look forward to seeing you all at, hopefully. Our annual luncheon next, next April and multiple events we're hoping to host throughout the state uh, of general interest to the bench bar and the general public on this court's history. I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to provide an update to this court. And as always, the society remains grateful for your support. And last but finally, but not least, um, Chief Justice Clement, happy belated birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.